I want to talk about C28. Although it's only a little fullerene, a little molecule, it might have some really interesting properties. Now, if you look at uh, C60 Buckminster fullerene, you'll see that it's made of pentagon rings and hexagon rings. In C60, all the pentagons are isolated from each other by these white bonds. And that's true for C60, but when you go down to the smaller fullerenes, the cages with less than 60 atoms, that can no longer be true. So what happens is you go smaller than C60, uh, the pentagons are no longer isolated from each other, if you like, from white bonds in, in the model. They actually have to be side by side. And that makes them, in principle, much less stable. But there are, as you go down in size of the cages, there are certain molecules that might have particular stability. And C28 may be one of them. It's an absolute fascinating molecule. And there's not much about C28 known. So this is what I want to tell you in the video today. Now, when C60 was discovered, it was discovered on what's called a cluster beam apparatus, which is a mass spectrometer, a very sensitive instrument that can pick up tiny, tiny amounts of material. So the results of that experiment uh, were basically, as you can see on the, on the back here, was a graph. So it didn't represent a way of actually making the molecules. That came later with what's called the carbon arc technique. But this data was instrumental in discovering the fullerenes, realizing they were there, and trying to understand some of the properties. And on this spectra, you've got, on this scale, going up, you've got the strength of the signal. And along here, you've got the size of the carbon molecule. And right here, you can see there's an enormous peak for C uh, C60 here. And further on, there's another peak for C70. But down here in this part of the graph, there's actually a whole load of smaller peaks for smaller cages. And these were always stable. So we think that these are real cages, but actually no one's been able to make these in large quantities. So they're just tantalizing data from the experiment. But no one's got a test tube of this stuff. And that's what we're trying to work on at the moment. So some of these cages may be C50, for example, C36. But there's one right down the end there, it's called C28, which is my favorite. Now, in 1987, Professor Harry Croto wrote a paper on these smaller fullerenes, the, full, the fullerenes below 60 atoms. And his favorite is this one called C28. And here, instead of the pentagons being separated like they are on the buckyball, here they're in groups, the pentagons are in groups of three. And there's 12 pentagons, if you remember, on the fullerenes. So there's four sets of groups of three pentagons. So it has what's called a tetrahedral sh shape. These four sets of the three pentagons are arranged in this beautiful tetrahedral structure. I'm going to show you more about the structures in a minute. So these are the smaller fullerenes. You've got C70, the rugby ball one over there in the end. You've got the buckyball football one here. You've got C50, C32, and our favorite one, the C28. And that may be the smallest stable caged fullerene. Uh, and Harry, wrote, Harry Croto wrote this paper in 1987, uh, a landmark paper looking at the possibility, uh, possibilities of this wonderful, wonderful molecule. Now, since then, there's been a whole load of theoretical papers on this molecule. No one's been able to make this stuff in a test tube. So we're all trying to find ways of making this beautiful molecule. And there's a, a picture behind me of a paper that claims that C28 may be superconducting at room temperature. So if we could make this molecule and join it together into structures, People are very excited because it may have some really, really interesting properties. Now, since 2000, people have reanalyzed these calculations, and they don't think that they're going to be room temperature superconductors anymore. But they certainly could be superconducting, and they, the, the temperatures may not be too low. So even if they're not room temperature superconductors, they may be very, very interesting structures. Now, usually with a fullerene, the, the key thing is to, to keep the pentagons apart. So there's a thing called the pentagon isolation rule. And so structures where the pentagons are separated, like in the football structure, are most stable. And structures where the pentagons come together and are side by side are least stable. So when you get down to C28, because there's pentagons side by side in threes on this structure, this shouldn't be stable on its own. And in fact, that may be the reason why no one has actually seen it in a test tube. However, what can happen possibly is that the thing may be able to be stabilized by adding atoms onto the cage. So where the three pentagons meet and you've got this instability, you might be able to take the strain away by adding a hydrogen atom, for example. Because there's four sets of these three pentagons, if you have four hydrogen atoms on here, you get C28H4, may be completely stable. The hydrogens may take the strain away from the system. So you can add atoms on the outside, but also people have done experiments with uranium 
which has got a valency of four, and actually it looks like you can trap a uranium atom inside, and instead of having atoms on the outside of the cage, you can take these bonds and bring them in to the uranium and stabilize it that way. Uh, uranium C28 seems to be particularly stable. So that's a, I don't really want to, in the lab, use uranium, but you can use other atoms uh, to stabilize the molecule, and that may be the route that we need to do to actually make this thing in real life. In the picture in the back here and on my website, uh, you can see this is uh, the C28 molecule flattened out over here. And if you join this atoms over to these atoms, you can roll the whole thing up and you can make a model yourself and explore the structure of this wonderful thing. <coughs> now, one of the interesting things about this cage is that it's got this four, this tetrahedral structure. So we should be able to react it with hydrogen to form C28H4. And if you think about it, that's a bit like a carbon atom. A single carbon atom has a valency of four. So you can have methane, CH4, a single atom with four hydrogens. This is like a super atom. So you've got a C28 cage may, in some ways, act like a super atom of a single carbon. Now, if you go back to a standard picture of diamond, diamond is usually considered to be made up, what well, it is considered to be made up of carbon atom with four neighbors, uh, sorry, with, uh, with four neighbors. So you've got an atom here joined to four uh, atoms, and it joins together to form this beautiful tetrahedral structure, which is the structure of a bit of diamond. Now, this, of course, is with single carbon atoms. But if the C28 molecule can act like a super atom, you could, in principle, join together C28 cages to produce a sort of diamond. And that's what I've got here on this model here. I'm just going to join the last uh, C28 cage in. And instead of here, now, these are, aren't single carbon atoms forming a diamond structure. These are actually now C28 cages joined together as if they, if you like, as if they're carbon atoms to form a strange form of diamond, a sort of hyper diamond. Um, so it's possible that C28 may have some very, very interesting chemical properties. But if we can join, make them and join them together to form diamond, this obviously this structure would have an incredible low density, would be very strong. Um, so in the future, we might have diamond-like structures and maybe even superconducting properties from this wonderful C28 molecule. If you want to know any more information, then please check out my webpage on C28.